Welcome back, guys. Today, we are talking about another upcoming model of drones, this yes. time from DJI. That's right, that's right. So yeah. this is the T60. Now, the first question everyone's asking besides about the details about the T60 and when it's gonna come out, all that good stuff is, should I wait? Uh, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the reasons people might wait. If you're in the market right now, this is a long way out for us, likely here in the United States. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll pr maybe, maybe we'll see it towards the end of 2024, depending on when you're watching this video. So if you're in the market currently, obviously don't wait. The T40 is a phenomenal system. Um, but if you're thinking, I want to get into it maybe for next year, 2025 spraying season, it's probably worth waiting for the T60 to come out. So we're going to uh, do a deep dive on, on what we know so far and walk you through some things. And uh, let's get started. Yeah, cool. let's do it. So let's talk about first the biggest thing is the capacity. Yeah. So what's the difference in capacity? Well, the T60 has actually two types of options available for spraying. So it has a standard two nozzle layout like right. you see currently sure. in the T40 models. Uh, and it's a 13.2 uh, gallon tank or 50 liters. Okay, good. Um, it also has a fruit tree kit, which adds an additional two nozzles okay. and has a larger tank of 15.8 gallons or 60 liters. Great, great. So a little bit larger. I also noticed one of the big key differences here is you'll notice four rotors instead, four rotors, four motors instead of the eight, like the current T40. And what I really like about that is just the simplicity of having less moving parts, right? Um, which is less great. Less maintenance. Yeah, less maintenance. And if you do have an issue, there's you're only replacing four props or two props or whatever versus eight. So a lot lower cost of operating as well, we could assume here. Correct. Yeah. Um, just a lot less wiring, a lot less components, less motor yeah. controllers. It's a lot simpler. Totally, design. which is good in the case of mechanics. It's a good thing. One of the really neat things I'm excited about with that orchard mode is... Uh, so, and we think that there's probably some kind of, we haven't confirmed this yet, but there's possibly some kind of Chinese uh, domestic regulation about tank capacity. Because in, uh, in this model and others, there's uh, two different tank sizes. So it's not like the drone is carrying its max because you can get a larger tank. And in the, in the fruit tree kit, it goes up, as Simon had mentioned, to 15.8 gallons, adds the two extra nozzles. Another really neat thing that they're doing is they're actually adding an, uh, a pressure and rotary atomizers to really help maximize and get that coverage to where you need it, generally under leaf or in the fruit zone, um, you know, on in an orchard environment. And I think in vineyards as well, we're going to see a lot of value there. They found that, um, first off, the microns can get on that kit down to 20 microns, which is crazy. That's great. Uh, again, you would never use that in a herbicide application, but in a fungicide or an insecticide uh, miticide application, that would be pretty slick. And I also really like, uh, they did some research there and said that the, the coverage rate of fogged droplets, those tiny, tiny, tiny VMDs, um, increased by 38% when they added this pressurization with the rotary atomizers. Right. I think it just helps get the, those droplets a lot smaller for this kind of specific types of applications. And totally. That, that does seem to be only with the fruit tree kit with the right. four nozzles, which also increases the total pump output rate to about 7.4 gallons per minute uh -huh. from 4.7 gallons per minute with the standard uh, which is the nozzle. standard yep system. i also really like they're still keeping with the magnetic impeller uh, uh pump system which really helps prevent uh you know clogging discs clog uh, clogging nozzles mm -hmm. uh, and it allows you to spray some pretty thick some pretty viscous stuff as right. well versus a diaphragm pump that's right and really the overall design of the drone i would say is not too different yeah. than the T40, which people love. It's a similar frame design, but there are a lot of small little changes here and there. Yeah. Um, so a couple other changes that we see in this design are going to be with the spreading system. Great. Um, it's going to be increased to about 132 pounds capacity, so nice. a little bit larger capacity. Yeah, great. And a much higher output rate of about 418 uh, pounds per minute. Per minute. Uh, output rate. It's moving so a lot, lot of volume. A wow. lot higher output rate. It also is going to use a different type of uh, uh, system, like an auger, to, to propel the product okay. through, similar to what we've seen with other manufacturers like XAG. Great. And looks like they're going to offer multiple size augers for different size products. So that's, Great. 
that's going to help um, you know increase the 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 usage and the type of uses that yeah. the drone can be used for. Quite and those a bit. seed feeders, uh, that, you know, the screw style seed feeders have worked really well out there. Right. Um, I also noticed that obviously a larger capacity, so we've got 56 inch props on this new bad boy. Mm -hmm. So that's also gonna help in any application of getting the product onto target, uh, whether right. that's a herbicide application and mitigating drift, larger droplets, uh, or especially in a place where you're really trying to get solid coverage, like in a fungicide or an insecticide or miticide application. That's right. Also larger uh, motors, larger ESCs as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, all really help this machine uh, crank out. Now, let's talk about the speed that's at the top there. Oh, right, right. I noticed, now yes. it only talks about this in a seeding application. So do we know yet if that maximum flight speed is gonna be the same I, in spraying? I believe it is. I've watched some other videos on this Great. from what I can interpret. And again, I, I wanna mention again, we haven't mentioned it yet. This entire page you're seeing is translated from Chinese using Google Translate, go, so go, it's go. not perfect. All right, it's good. a pretty good job. We can understand it. But... It's better than my Mandarin. Yes. I like this one right down here. It says, suitable for different materials needs nine. And you're yeah. like, nine what? what? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. 13.8 um, meters per second, y'all, just to give you some context, is about 30, 32 miles an hour. So that's hustling. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a big, big, big game changer with the T versus the T40, for example, right. when it comes to productivity. Larger capacity, if you don't have that high flight speed or a larger swath, you're not really gaining anything with higher capacity. You're still going to run through your batteries in the same amount of time, which is just going to have you filling up the tank less often, but you're still replacing batteries as often as you do today. So unless you get faster speeds like you do now on this T60 or a wider swath, capacity doesn't really make as much of a difference unless you're hitting higher application rates. So if right. you're above three, four gallons per acre for your application rate, our friends in California are all five gallons per acre is the minimum regardless of product. Um, but uh, you know that those are the things that this is going to really big a big game changer for efficiencies. That's right. Yeah. Cool. So a couple other things. Uh, they are definitely improving the obstacle detection system. Yeah. So it looks like they've improved radar. So the distance of the that the radar can actually see. Wow. Um, uh, something else that I have seen that's not listed here is they've also added 4G communication systems. Oh, on nice. Drones. So okay. that's going to allow for. Uh, beyond visual line of sight yep. operations without losing signal Amazing. and operating and managing aircraft from uh, remote locations. Right, right. As regulations approve those types of things right. which we suspect will exactly. come in the future. That also is really great. You know, DJI already has the existing uh, antenna uh, booster system as well. Relay. So that's, yeah, relay, which is going to be really great. Um, another thing I noticed as soon as we pulled this up was that those headlights. That's great. It's incredible. Yeah. Now it's 75 watts, y'all, and those are LEDs. Yeah. So 75 watts on an That's LED is insane. Yeah. And I think that there's so much value in being able to spray at night. Now there's a nighttime waiver that you have to get and some other challenges from a regulatory perspective, but um, generally, uh, based on the chemistry, you know, it, 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 applying at night is almost always a win. But you right. that but not you know that those front headlights really solid radar, which we're going to talk about next, um, is, is critical when you're in a low visibility situation like that. That's right, yeah. And again, they're just, DJI has always done really well with their lighting and radar and sensor systems. I mean, they, they're amazing at yeah. what they do. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I've seen some videos and some, some, some previews of the T60 and how it flies around obstacles. It's really impressive. So slick. So let's yeah. talk about that. The radar range is increasing uh, to, um, I think we've got up to 196 feet now. Most important, like the range of the radar is great, right? But you've got to have the computing power to be able to back up and process that data to make real time changes in its navigation. So their new computing power is 10 to 12 times faster than the T40s mm -hmm. uh, or T50s, I guess, which is going to be even more than the T40s. Right. Um, so that's a really big deal. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it's a, yeah, that's that's I think a, a really key part. Um, you know about this also with that faster and better computing power on board the next part down here is on aerial surveying so it's going to cover more area in a mapping mission is that right simon that's right yeah okay. and you know we're still verifying if the, the translation of these numbers is correct 250 yeah. acres would be a huge amount more compared to the t40 which right. would only do i think 
30 acres. Yeah. Um, so the remote at first glance looks just like what we're used to, but right. it is with a different compu uh, processor on board. It looks like it has an eight core processor. So yep. I think it's also possibly a larger display. Uh, hopefully with the new processor, they've improved the battery life too. Right. So sure, more I'm efficient. Definitely yep. excited to see, you know, learn more about the remote. And that, again, at first glance, I thought it was the same one, but it, it's hard it, to tell. Like, is that per is her yeah. are her hands just really small and makes the screen look bigger, or you <laughs> maybe, know, yeah, maybe. hard to tell. Right, right. All yeah, right, cool. Very impressive. Uh, I mean, we've always loved the DJI remote, so yes. improving on that is going to make it even better. Fantastic. Right. All right, cool. Yeah, here's some more information on it. Yep. And a lot of uh, uh, improvements in the fruit tree mode as well. It's something I see right. that they've they've definitely done a lot of work on yeah. again with the new spraying, uh, spraying system. Great. And there's a lot of new implementation with the software as well. Yeah. So this drone will run uh, from what everything I've seen is a completely revised version of DJI's Agri software. Fantastic. Uh, and you can see it's compatible with, with other systems too. So DJI Maps, DJI Smart Agriculture Platform. Yep. It can do three-dimensional mapping uh, and apparently shared by third-party systems too. Right. So that's very, very, I very I love DJI's focus on being able to easily integrate with other systems. I think that's so great. That's right. Super valuable for customers. That's right. And yeah, finally, let's talk about batteries. Batteries right. and battery charging. So at first yeah. glance, this looks very similar to what we're used to now, but this yeah. is a completely revised battery and battery mm -hmm. charging system. Looks like it. So the first thing is that, and you can't really see it here, but it's a completely new connector type for the battery. It's much more heavy duty and larger connector style. Right. Um, the battery itself is larger. It's an uh, improved cooling system with uh, cooling from multiple directions. It's still air-cooled, but uh, right. an improved cooling system and also an improved uh, charger and generator options available for it for, for high-speed charging. Excellent. So Now, a downside for our T40 folks out there right now is that these batteries don't appear to be cross-compatible from everything we see. No, it's not. Um, yeah, which is kind of okay because some folks have had some issues with those batteries so you might not be bummed about this I think the big thing is more efficient and larger plug connections will right. handle that it says they've got a 500 amp high power connectors now right that's critical when it comes to the draw that these aircraft pull on those batteries and then also being able to pump them full of juice that quickly um, which is awesome yeah that's great right, right. it looks like they've improved uh, just just cooling about everything too. on it yeah yep. cooling station and Good. in addition to this, there's also a smaller version of this, the T25P, T25P. which is a lot like what we have with the T40 and the T20P. Yep. It's basically essentially a half-sized level up yep. version of it. Great. It's it's going to have the same kind of features, of course, less capacity, but uh, at a much lower cost. Great. So it'll be great for people that are entering the market or have smaller fields that they need to uh, utilize these in. Right. They have the options of different size aircraft available. I love it. Do you have any yeah. videos? I do. Yeah, I got a short oh, little great. video here that we can show. And this is taken right from DJI's uh, announcement of the okay. of the T60. So awesome. you'll have to pardon some of the translation. But here's a great video showing it in action and wow, kind of what it look looks at that, like. That movement of the canopy. Incredible. Yeah. So again, the new larger props, yep, and motors, motors motor right. controllers. Yep. So a lot of changes overall. Like at first glance, it, it looks similar, but I I'm think... really excited about the added simplicity of those four rotors. I mean, you yes. can just tell by you know the larger these aircraft get, uh, the more cumbersome they are to to you can transport. See there's oh, there's yeah. a radar on the back now too. Yep. So great. You, it's designed to follow. I mean, it looks that's like a incredibly hell of a grade. steep grade. Wow, check that out. So. And Excellent. I know that one of the things that we read about was dead trees and dead uh, and power lines, that this new binocular system, this new radar system was designed mm -hmm. specifically uh, to be able to pick up those things, which is not uh, great right now out in the field. Yeah. Um, so that's excellent. All right, yeah, cool. Very impressive. Yep, great. Well, we can't wait to see this thing in live and in person whenever, uh, whenever we get our hands on one. And of course, we'll do a... a a, a super super deep dive on that wow check out those headlights Come i know on. i like the headlights Dang, that's awesome that's right yeah it's, oh and night vision oh i didn't even know that look at Come that on. <laughs> little cool hidden gym there that's yeah. right so uh yeah so stay tuned again you know, when these aircraft come out, you know, I know a lot of times manufacturers are testing them and running them through the paces in China, which is great. We like that. So we get a really, really solid, mature platform by the time it comes to the United States. 
Um, so, but keep in mind, it's going to need FAA approval, FCC approval. Then it's got to be put on ships and shipped across the world. Export um, certification. Export certification, all those things. So, yeah. you know, we aren't going to see this anytime soon. My guess is that it's going to be towards the end of 2024. At the earliest. Um, likely. At the earliest, yeah. yeah. So just keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, there's still, these T40s are out there rocking it every single day. Um, you know, so don't think twice if you're in the market now. T40 um, is, is the way to go by, by far and large. So anyway, thanks for watching y'all yeah. and subscribe to keep an eye out on, um, you know, whenever we do release new updates on platforms. And if you've seen, uh, you know, if you're in China or, you know, have, have visited and see, have seen the T60, uh, feel free to comment. And if you've got any questions that we didn't address about T60 or otherwise, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, feel free to comment as well. Uh, and just let us know what you're thinking. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye.